Well, hello and thank you for joining talk series, uh, the 18 minute short, sharp coverage of individual topics. Today, um, I've got a great privilege of running through Red Hat Insights. Red Hat Insights is included in your subscription today um, and therefore available for you to use. Um, we're specifically gonna be looking at Red Hat Insights as it associates to RHEL. Um, but um, Red Hat Insights is broader than, uh, than just RHEL. So um, with your RHEL subscription, you have the ability to be able to use Insights, whether that subscription is a paid or developer subscription. So it's available to you. But what is Insights? So Red Hat Insights can be th thought of as a software, as a service platform, a cloud-based architecture, which provides um, AI and ML analysis of your systems. The purpose of the platform is to assess your environment um, and help you to I proactively identify um, and remediate threats. This gives you the ability to avoid unplanned outages, downtime, configuration er errors, risks or vulnerabilities within your architecture. So pretty cool tool, I think you will agree. So um, let's break that down and have a look at the individual statistics. Um, this uh, tool, this service was uh, independently audited. The auditors went out to a number of users of this architecture uh, to understand what value they got from it. So as you can see here, there are a number of metrics which I'll go through. Um, the most important of which is 96% reduction in the time it took um, to identify performance, stability and security risks. So you have a tool available to you today as a software as a service, which you're going to see demoed in a minute, which is simple as a single command, which gives you the ability to be able to upload information either directly from the system or via another, a number of other techniques, i.e. through satellites or through a, a web proxy, um, and will automate um, the analysis and remediation of some pretty important things in your environment. Um, we can go on to see 26% reduction in the administration um, needs needed to detect uh, known risks. Now this is really important as you'll see a second ago because unsurprisingly quite a lot of the issues that you face and we see um, are already known to us or our vendor partners. 88% less time taken to review the patch status. So think of this as an ability as well to create a dynamic inventory, see the state of your uh, Red Hat fleet um, and uh, be able to dig into details about that Red Hat fleet. Um, does it take a long time to do? As I said before, it's a, it's a client which is provided by default from RHEL 8 onwards um, or a package which can be downloaded and installed from RHEL 6 and RHEL 7 um, and um, once enabled, uh, single, single simple command to enable, um, it will upload information once a day and that information will be analysed, um, uh, anonymised and then analysed across our entire fleet of systems. Um, takes about a minute <laughs> um, to, um, to discover vulnerabilities on you know, 100 virtual machines as an example. So super powerful, super useful tool. 91% um, less time taken to address vulnerabilities. Why? Because we're proactively alerting you um, to them and we're also providing you a capability to remediate them in automatic fashion so that you wouldn't have to create your own change control documents. 69% uh, reduction in the time taken to detect policy violations. So if you're an organisation that cares about standards, that cares about compliance, this set of tooling gives you the ability to be able to monitor your standard and SOE environment, um, as an example, and compliance, i.e. SCAP profiles under PCI DSS or ISO or Essential 8 or whatever mechanism you follow. Um, so let's dig into a little bit more detail around the, um, the speed to remediate. As you probably know, Red Hat has a lot of systems out there, millions of production deployments. 
Um, every single one of those production deployments that is reporting, every single one of the support cases that has been created in excess of a million support cases are analysed against your configuration of your individual system and then we are providing recommendations and remediations for any errors that we find. We also have partnered with a number of organisations, take Microsoft as an example, um, or Amazon, um, and they will provide configuration recommendations specific to the software which is running on your instance. Um, so, for example, you might have followed the, um, the guide, the manuals, uh, exactly to deploy your Microsoft SQL environment on top of RHEL, um, but Microsoft are going to be able to give you a number of recommendations on how you performance optimise that based on real customer experience, real customer issues. And we'll do that automatically, uh, dynamically, and we will provide you a remediation in the form of an Ansible playbook. So super, super, super useful tool. The most important piece for me here is that top first line, which is 85% of the critical issues that are raised to Red Hat support or our vendor partners are things we already know about. So wouldn't it be great if we could proactively tell you that your system is exposed to that so you never have to go through the rigmarole of raising support cases um, and troubleshooting. So think of this as AI ops, if you like. So um, here's some real world examples of what we just talked about. First one is obviously um, that 100,000 plus um, vendor um, uh, partner recommendation. So you can see here that Insights was immediately able to identify 10 issues on uh, this customer's Oracle Rack environment that had been plaguing them for six months. So um, turning it on, recommendations came out remediation playbooks were provided, resolution was given, so pretty straightforward. Second one is a, is a very common example, and that's that you've built out your system, it was SOE at the start, somebody's gone in and made some modifications, the modifications that have been made um, are not correct, um, and before you hit that issue, um, we're able to um, uh, remediate and report for you. So like I said, really, really, really useful tool. So. Let's have a look. Um, so um, Insights itself um, is, um, is as simple um, as, um, as kicking off the Insights client. So um, I have to do that, oh, sorry. Um, I have to do that as, uh, as root. So I'm gonna sudo Insights client, Oops. if I could spell. Insights client. Now if I uh, was setting this up for the first time, I would do the minus minus register option, which would go away and use the same credentials that I registered my subscription for the system um, and register against cloud.redhack.com. As I've already done that, um, I'm just going to run the uh, client, so kick it off if you like. It's going to build um, the, uh, the report that it requires and then it's going to transfer that across to cloud.redhat.com. That runs automatically as a service within your system. Uh, it runs once a day. It can be configured with the information it sends. Um, the information has been ind independently audited and security reviewed, so you can be comfortable that we're not sending any information that we shouldn't. Um, the information itself is kept for the minimum amount of time that is required to run the analysis. It is then removed and only the output data is retained. And that's no longer than 24 hours. Um, the information is not shared with any other customer. Um, it's aggregated and then analysed against. So um, as I said, this will then go away and collect that information. Um, there is an insights client directory within the ETC folder, which gives you some configuration options, like I said before, around whether we're transferring information directly, whether we're transferring information via a proxy, or whether we're transferring information through our existing uh, patch management system like satellite. There is also the ability to be able to create machine-based tags. I think this is really exciting and underrated. Um, 
it um, essentially gives you the ability within the dynamic inventory that we're going to have a look at in a second to tag systems based on whatever metrics you want to view them as. So you can sort systems based on those metrics. That might be all my x86 fleet and then there might be another one that subsets that into my x86 fleet running in public cloud, my x86 fleet running in private cloud, my x86 fleet running um, this this particular application. So I can I can create these meta tags if you like. Those meta tags will then be forwarded on to cloud.redhat.com. So that is an example of the Insights client directory um, that I spoke about before. Um, that's now transferred the information up into cloud.redhat.com. Simple as that. Let's have a look at uh, what we can see from there. Um, so this is cloud.redhat.com. I've taken the liberty of logging in. Um, you can see um, we already have some visibility of, um, of what's going on within our environment. So apps, rel instances, automation nodes. So you can see that cloud.redhat.com is more than just Red Hat Insights. Um, and over time, you'll see this develop into greater and greater um, software as a service of offerings um, to enable simplified operation and support for you. If we want to have a look at Red Hat Insights specifically to RHEL, you can see that on the left hand side. Um, if I click on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it will take me into the dashboard view of my existing Linux fleet. Um, the, uh, the dashboard view can be thought of as that kind of high level overview of all the individual elements. So you can see here um, at a at first first glance that I have 14 systems registered, um, three of which are in a stale state, three of which are to be removed. So what does the stale state and be removed? As I said, this is a dynamic inventory. If it doesn't require any uh, management from you or your team, um, it automatically prunes systems when they stop registering for more than eight days. Okay, so if it hasn't updated for eight days, it's going to be removed. If it starts updating again, it's going to be added back in. So therefore, you get a very simple um, um, dynamic inventory of the deployed systems. At a high level, I can see immediately the vulnerabilities that I'm exposed to um, from a CVE perspective and from a known exploit. I've got one that you can see that I've identified. We've got some advisor recommendations, so that would be my third party um, vendor recommendations around configuration. I can break down those CVEs into different levels of severity, high, um, eight being the highest, um, zero obviously being the lowest. Um, so I can see how, um, how many um, critical vulnerabilities I need to remediate. I can see my remediations by tasks, so critical, important, moderate and low. Um, and I can set some of these metrics myself. I can see, as I said before, my compliance states. So I've got some compliant baselines. I can see an essential eight compliance baseline, which is the ASIO Australian um, uh, um, uh, recommendations. Um, but I can also do CIS, ISO, PI, PC, PCI, DSS. Um, recommend some re remediations. Um, I can see my subscription watch and I can see my patch analysis. So I've got a high level view of my entire fleet and all the things that most um, managers are going to want uh, to have reported on. Down the left hand side I can break these into uh, more detail. Um, so let's have a quick look at the, um, the dynamic inventory as I said before. So the list of my individual systems. A couple of uh, highlights down the left hand side for me. Um, that um, again, I think are underrated in the architecture. The drift analysis is huge. So a lot of people um, like to create the SOE environments. Uh, a lot of people provide those SOE environments to their application teams. And then that's pretty much where it ends, right? It diverges and goes off into uh, that bespoke system. Um, your drift analysis gives you the ability to be able to view how far each individual system has drifted away from that SOE and remediate them uh, if required. Uh, the other one, as I said before, is this compliance um, uh, analysis. So it will analyze each one of the systems and see whether they correspond to the very real compliance requirements that you have um, for your organization. As I said before, PCI and DSS. So we can see here a list of the systems that have been registered. I can see the OS type for those registered systems. And I can see the last time that those systems 
um, provided an update. I can also see that some of these systems has been, have been tagged. We spoke about that before using the tags capability within the ATC directory um, in your architecture. I can view all of those tags um, at the top. Um, so I can filter based on the tags um, within the system. And as I said before, you know, it could be anything of your liking, but you can see here we're doing location, um, we're doing groups, we're doing activation keys, so on and so forth. So you can correspond those how you see um, fit. Um, patch management is another hugely important one. So I can see individually at a glance um, I've been notified of a security remediation, for example, and I can see at a glance which systems are exposed to a given CV, so a given vulnerability that I've been provided by my security team. So um, that is um, Insights, um, is a very quick um, rundown. Um, I'd ask um, that you do a couple of things. Uh, this is a free tool. I believe it, it, it provides a huge amount of value, um, certainly from my perspective anyway. Um, it's as simple as a single command to register. It's installed by default on RHEL 8. It's a package that's available to all of our customers um, from RHEL 6 and RHEL 7. Um, it has um, no cost associated with it. You can use it with the paid subscriptions. You can also use it with your free developer subscriptions. Um, why not register? Register yourself for an account on cloud.redhat.com. Um, enable the Insights client with insights-client-register. Um, review um, your existing environment um, and then uh, remediate um, any of the issues that you find in there. Um, and uh, we'd love to get your feedback um, on how that went um, and any questions that you might have on it. Um, this has been uh, a Red Hat talk, um, an 18 minute uh, short burst uh, of product overview. If you've got anything that you would really like to see in the next talk, please let us know um, and we will cover it for you. Thank you very much for your time uh, and we look forward to speaking to you soon.